Hello, hello, this is MacPotty. Welcome to the start of my latest tutorial series. Yay! Uh, it's been a while since I've recorded anything, because there's not been much that I've actually wanted to record. But I've been playing this game and the space, and I would very much like to do a tutorial series for it. So here we go. Uh, I've played it a little bit. Uh, well, not a little bit. I've played one game for like 20 hours. It took a really long time to finish. But I've learnt most of the game, so I'm going to help teach the basics on how to play it and most of the advanced stuff. Anything I miss out I can add on, or you can learn for yourselves. Mm. So, to start, we're going to go into options, because there's a couple of things here that we need to go over. Uh, which is these. Right, uh, the game has its own tutorial, but it's text-based which I don't like. It comes up with a menu, uh, not menu, a pop-up and then you click next and next and it gives text on what to do. I don't like that. I prefer learning as I play. So, but you can probably learn something in the tutorial, but yeah. Uh, you can all disable it anytime you want or enable it anytime you want. Uh, also upgrade ship design in queue. This is useful. Uh, in this game you're researching lots of technologies and there's a lot that affect ships and while you're building a ship if you have this on and you uh, upgrade a ship while you're building them it will automatically upgrade the ships that you're building otherwise you have to do it manually so keeping this on is a good idea just so it does it itself Display galaxy scale just has a little scale on the edge to show how zoomed in you are on the galaxy. Uh, you can have that on or off, it's up to you. And lock end of turn is quite useful. As you can see there, any pop-ups or critical warnings that you get, you can't end the turn until you've dealt with them. So there's no, there's no accidental end turning, which is nice to have on. So I've got a game running already. Um, just in... Yeah, so I'm going to do a new game, but because this game takes so long to get into and to build up, uh, it's it will take too long to record it all. So I'm going to start on this, and then when I've done enough of this, I'll switch to my other game and continue from there, because I've done more on my other game. So basic settings, we don't need to go over these. Uh, each, uh, yeah, there's all the different races. Each race has its own benefits and negatives. You pick your favourite right now. I'm with Siphons. I've only played two so far. I've played Hisho and... Is it Siphons? So Sophons? Whatever. But I'm these guys right now in my other game. So, yeah, a couple of AI, no big deal. There's a lot of settings to go over that will take time to learn. Uh, it gives... If you hover over it, it tells you what they do. Okay. So we'll start the game. And just skip the intro. Okay, so overall HUD. This is the scale on your zoom. That's on the left here. Uh, critical messages are here. Uh, this is the end turn button here. Uh, we've got yeah up here player status and score, uh, empire overview, research, fleets, diplomacy, heroes, and options. So, let's start by going over these. So under the uh, overall Empire status, it will list all the areas that you own and basic details for them, how many ships they've got, what they're currently doing, so forth, so forth. Uh, you set your tax rate with the sliders here, slider here. So yeah, 100%, 0%, set the tax rate here, depending on how much money you need. Uh, money is dust, which is here, so I've got 10 and I'm making 7. Uh, research is uh, the points that are going into research, obviously. Uh, your resources, they're specific to planets, we'll come into that later. Uh, empire factors, these are the benefits that you get from the empire that you're playing. Uh, trade routes, trade routes are automatic, uh, but advanced 
Yeah, diplomacy you have to do all you, you have to do yourself. Which is quite nice. I find. Uh yep. And this is just basic information on the star system that you own. You can own more, obviously. This is the I've only got one now since this is a new game. So these are new heroes available. You start with new you start with three heroes. Uh after this I'm going to no, we'll do research later because that's gonna take a long time. Uh, diplomacy is pretty simple. You're in the middle, any other players are around the circle. I haven't discovered them yet, so we can't do anything. But uh, later on we'll probably discover one. We'll go into that on my next on the next one, yeah. Uh, heroes, this is where you actually recruit heroes, so I haven't got any yet. Uh, each hero is unique, they get their own traits. Well no, that's that's wrong, sorry. Let me start again. Uh, I think it's, yeah, they get a, uh, a random two out of six uh, kind of specialities. So for this one, he's got administrator and commander. This one's got commander and pilot. Uh, this one's got corporate and adventurer. Uh, those will affect the traits that they can get on levels, on leveling up. We can't afford one yet, we need 20, so we can't go into those. Oh, we could do, yeah, yeah, shit. Uh, so if we inspect just the first one. So here we've got the benefits for heroes. As they level up, they'll get abilities, which you can unlock here. There's quite a few abilities based on their, their specialities and the abilities that they've already unlocked for them and their attributes which affect their bonuses. So he's got 9 labour which is improving food production and industry production. And uh, yeah, that's all explained uh, when you hover over it. <coughs> now you can permanently get rid of a hero but we're not going to do that because that would be silly. Uh, next we'll go into the military tab uh, which shows all your active fleets here. So I've got two at the moment. Uh, command points are how many ships you can have in a fleet. So I can have five total, and these two are having one out of five. Uh, certain ships will cost more command points, which will limit the size that you can have for a fleet. Uh, the little fist is military power, that's just how strong they are. The first aid sign is obviously their health. Uh, the silhouette is a hero that's assigned to the fleet, we don't have any so they're blank. Uh, the arrow is their movement points, and the mission is what they're currently doing. Uh, ship designing on this can be quite fun. It would be nice if there was more to do on it, but uh, we might as well go into that now. So say... oh no, sorry, no, we'll go into that in a second. Uh, we'll do quickly go into research. So we've got the research tree which is split into four sections. Uh, the bottom is, yeah, if you hover over them, exploration and expansion, uh, diplomacy and economic is over here, uh, military strength is up here, and technology is over here. So we zoom in and we can see what they do. Uh, we see the turns it will take to research it, and let's just go with an easy one, uh, say this one. No. No, we'll go with this one since we've already got it researched. So with this, uh, by researching this I gain access to this upgrade. And yeah, there's a lot to research, so researching will take up a good portion of your time. Uh, right, we'll focus... No, we're not focus. Uh, if we pay attention to the military ones, now uh, researching the military ones will give you access to new weapons, new and stronger weapons, uh, new support modules that you can equip to ships. So say I've researched this one here, which is torpedoes, which will give any ships of mine missiles. Now I want to give my ships missiles, so we go into, say, just say the investigator. Uh, yeah, you got how many command points it has, military power, you see all the specific details for that ship here. But, as we can see here, it hasn't got any missiles. So we have to click Modify. 
uh, missiles will be displayed here. I want to add missiles to it, so that's what I do. Uh, let's just pretend this is missiles. So I'm adding missiles to it. There's a limit to how much you can add to a ship, which is tonnage here. Uh, all these upgrades. Well, not really upgrades. Uh, all these modules uh, have a tonnage weight here. That's seven and how much military power they have. That's eight. So out of 100, I've got 94 with these. So I've added missiles. That's all good. These, these ships now have missiles in addition to uh, the kinetic, the, yeah, the hard kinetic weapons we've got here. And let's just add that to even out. So, I've got these. Now I apply it, and it's been renamed to Investigator 2. That's because I've upgraded the ship. I've, I've changed its loadout. Uh, you're going to be doing that a lot, because you, you can see there's a lot of research into weapons and different modules that you can get. So, you're going to be coming back to this quite often to change out the modules that they're carrying with new and better ones. Uh, you can do that by, you know, I find it's better to do it manually rather than using auto upgrade. But, let's say I take a couple out of here. Uh, there's some tonnage left. I'm not sure what I should add. I can do auto upgrade for me. And it will add... Yeah, it's added... What did it add, actually? Well, it's added something, because, yeah, the tonnage is back up. I think it's added extra layered hulls for defense. So, yeah, you can use that to automatically upgrade your ships. Uh, there's all kinds of... <laughs> yeah, there's, there's so much research, research, I can't really go into it. It will take forever. But there's all kinds of different benefits and bonuses that you can get from them. What will probably help is anything... That's got a star next to it, like this one. Or, if we go for here, this one. These are passive. You don't need to do anything. It's automatically applied. Any stars are passive. That's... I find that's really handy to know. Yeah, because once you've researched it, you don't need to take advantage of it. It's already in place. So, for instance, if we go back to this one here. Plus 10% tonnage on ships. So that's quite good to have. So that investigator was 100, it'll be 110. I can add an extra weapon to it. Uh, okay. Uh, I think that's all of that, yeah. Right, we'll go into the actual overview now, which is here. So we've got some ships here. We'll do that last. Basically, the game is centered and centered around star systems, which are these here. This here is a star system, this over here is an unexplored star, sy star system, and the lines are pathways connecting them, which will the ships will go through to get to them. Uh, we can click on a star system to zoom in on it, and we get lots of information. Uh, so, planets that you can colonize in this star system, uh, planet types, planet bonuses, uh, yeah. These don't actually have any bonuses, because they're blank. But, yeah, okay. So, we'll s uh, coming up to here, uh, the population that's currently in the star system, I've got three out of six, which are here, uh, represented by these population icons, these little stick figure men kind of thing. Uh, blue means that the slot is filled, white means that it's empty. So, I've got three here and three left. 3 out of 6. Uh, their overall happiness, which is affected by different things. Uh, you can get upgrades for them, you can get research for them. Uh, obviously, generally, having a high approval will improve their production. But having a low approval won't mean that they won't go apeshit. Let me say that again. Uh, having a low approval doesn't mean that your game is going to end, basically. Uh, it will decrease production. Uh, as long as you're producing something, it will be alright. Nothing bad will happen. Uh, we can give an example with that. So if we go back here, if I raise the tax rate, tax rate, you can see that they're getting very unhappy. But from here, they're still producing. They're still making food, so they're not going to starve. 
the, the population rate has decreased. Which is here. The more food and the happier they are, the quicker the population will improve, which is represented here, the number of turns it will take. If I put it down to, no to nothing, seven. In seven turns they'll have uh, the population will increase. Uh, it only becomes a problem if you have their unhappiness too low and they're not producing enough. So minus six, they're going to start starving and they're going to start dying. But in some cases, you can be making so much food that even when they're like this, even when they're this unhappy, they're still producing enough food. Uh, what was this on? Uh, right, there's no difference here. So I just, I'm still making the exact same amount. I'm just getting a little extra money from here. So keeping it like that. Okay. These are your basic resources here. Uh, the game calls them FIDS, which stands for Food, Industry, Science, and Dust. So food, obviously, is food for your people. Industry is building pretty much everything. Anything that needs to be built is industry. Like this here. This is uh, the cost. A2.5 industry. It would take 11 turns. Uh, blue one is science. That's how many science points you're getting. So I'm getting 11 from here. And dust, how much dust I'm making, I'm getting 11. Uh, you can assign heroes <coughs> to the star system. Which will give passive bon uh, bonuses to it. Like increase in production, uh, increase in happiness, etc. Et uh, the resources that are being tapped. There's quite a few resources. Uh, strategic and luxury. Luxury improves your economic stuff. Uh, like food. Uh, industry, dust, and strategic improves your military stuff. Uh, you'll need strategic to build the bigger ships, uh, the bigger and better ships. Uh, trade routes, how many trade routes are currently going on in the star system? Max two. I haven't got any because I haven't met anyone yet. Uh, that's fine. Uh, you can see planet specific FIDs here. So this planet is making me nine food, uh, six science, Six, uh, 6 industry, 12 dust. Uh, hovering over these FIDs will give you the details from it. Like so. Yeah. So even though I'm making 6 signs here, but I'm making, uh, making 11 here, that's because I'm getting plus 2.4 from faction trade, plus 2 from main system, that's my starting syst uh, star system, and 0.8 from tax rate. Uh, I can't colonize these other planets yet because you need to research them. But as you can see there's different types. This one has medium Terran which as you can see here is good for making money plus four. Uh, not very good with industry at plus two. So for every one population on that planet I'll get plus two industry. Uh, I currently got three which is giving me eight and I'm getting two from an improvement, which is just an upgrade for the star system. Uh, lava is different. Minus 15 approval, that's the purple thumbs up, that's approval. But it's good for industry. Uh, tiny lava is the exact same, it's just got a much smaller population cap. And uh, last one, large gas helium is really, really good for science, plus 10 per person. But it's minus 20 approval. Uh, the approval is for the star system. So with these together, uh, 15, 15, 30, 50. So I'll be having minus 50, which would make them very unhappy if I populated those planets as well. Uh, this one has a moon that you can see here. Uh, later on you can research to explore moons and they might have something good. They might just be barren. But there are there are benefits to both. Uh, just an example, a barren 
uh, not barren, an empty moon can be used for farmland to improve to improve the food. Because these lava planets don't make much food. But if these were all lava and this was an empty moon, I could grow my food on the moon and this place would be perfectly happy. Uh, now, uh, so yeah. Uh, construction for the entire sub, uh, the entire star system is here. This affects all the planets. Yeah, that's down here. So if I research that, it'll affect all the planets, not just one or two. It's all of them. Uh, I can also build ships, which are here under ships. It takes turns to build ships. Uh, cost industry, everything costs industry, like this. Uh, cost industry, cost industry, costs. Industry, industry, industry. Oh, uh, there's no... Uh, like on other strategy games where you collect resources, there's no stockpiling on this. You don't get surplus. If I left this, I wouldn't have an extra eight stashed somewhere. Uh, because of that, you should always be building something, you should always be doing something with the star system. Uh, I hope that makes sense. Uh, hangar is the ships that you currently have docked in this star system. Uh, this guy here isn't docked, he's just orbiting. Uh, specifically, they're in here and you need to create them to get them out here. Uh, improvements, just the improvements that you got for this star system. So it starts with this one here. Yeah, plus two food, plus two industry. Cloning your base. Now we'll zoom in on this planet here. And you get more information, specifically about this planet. And you get more upgrades. Or, yeah, you can get more upgrades for certain planets. Uh, nothing for this one, unfortunately. But on this one, because it's got a moon, I can explore the moon, but I need to research it first. So the only thing I can do for this planet is exploitation. Uh, each planet will have its own exploitation. Which is basically what you're solely using that planet for. There's four. Yeah, there's four types. Uh, food, industry, money, or dust, and science. So I can make extra food, extra industry, extra money or extra dust, no, extra science. Uh, since I need the food to get this place populated, I will go for food. Take six turns, that'll be built, I'll have extra food. And this will be enough to supply the entire sub, uh, star system. Yeah, so uh, you can queue them, obviously, as well. So once this is done, I want to research this, and then I want to earn extra dust. Now these two are, yeah, these two are special because they're constant. Uh, any industry that you're not using to build something, like ships, can be used to convert into science points or money. So it's a set figure, 25% of industry can t converted into science points or 25% into dust. So I click that, 25% of 8 will be added into the research points, which are here. Uh, if we quickly go into research points, uh, each upgrade will cost, cost a certain amount of research points, which we can see here. So this one will cost 40. So if I want to research that, it's going to take four turns because I'm only getting 11. Uh, so having a large amount of research points would definitely come in handy for these later ones. Like this one here. 60,000. It will take 5,358 turns <laughs> to research. It won't take nearly that long, so don't worry. As you colonize new star systems and uh, take over more planets, that figure will bump up a lot and will shave those turns off. Probably won't even notice until you're getting ready to research it and it's gone down to 15 turns. Uh, so, uh, I think 
one of the last things to go over is actual exploring. So we've got these two ships. Uh, this one here is a scout investigator. Uh, the ships are named different for each race, but you can pretty much tell what they're for. Uh, this one has good sight range and has good uh, movement speed. There's not even really movement speed. Uh, how far it can travel. Because this is turn based, so you get a number, you get a set amount of movement for each movable thing. So this one has 11, which is this little arrow here, and this one has 6. So this can go almost twice as far. But let's have this go up here to, re uh, to search it. There we go. So I've discovered a new star system. Ugh. So, yeah, we can zoom in on this star system. Oh, perfect. Okay, so this one has its specific property to this planet. This one has metallic alloys, plus 10% uh, approval, plus 1% industry per person. And it's also got a luxury resource, which is red sand, plus 1 food, plus 2 dust, plus two dust per red saying on empire, and yeah, resource, resource monopoly is when you're collecting so much of this particular resource that it gives you a permanent bonus, not permanent, uh, a passive bonus, which is called the monopoly. In this case I get an extra 20% across my entire empire. So that's any place that I've colonized. It's got this red area around it. This red area represents your uh, empire's range, I guess. Since I don't have this planet, uh, well, since I don't own this star system, there's no red circle. Uh, this will gradually grow over time. And when it's combined with all the areas that you've colonized, it, it's a quite a huge radius. Uh, there is one annoying thing about this game. When you're moving someone, you they can't do anything when they're traveling between star systems. So, this guy. I want him to go here, like so. And uh, now he's midway, and I changed my mind, I want him to come back. He can't. He has to get to the end of this star system. He has to get to this star system first, and then move back. So there's no kind of turning midway. Uh, you can't be attacked on this, you can't attack someone on this. So, anything you want to do with your ships, they have to be in a, within a star system. Uh, there are star types. This is quite well detailed when it comes to the actual galaxy itself. So this one is a yellow sun which affects what planets are in their system so for this one gas giants are very rare so this is unlikely to have a gas giant in it uh, this one's a red dwarf, no, red supergiant uh, it's unlikely to have either easily colonized planets or gas giants so these planets will be harder to colonize uh, this one down here is a blue sun among the hottest and brightest uh, easily col colonizable planets are less common. Uh, this one here, uh, I'm not sure which one this is. I think maybe that's a red dwarf or just yellow sun. Well, since I've already explored it, I don't need to know because I can see what's here. Large Arctic, tiny Arctic, large gas helium, huge Arctic. There's quite a few different types of planets. You need to learn them. Uh, just remember that size only affects how many people can be on there. It's the actual planet type that you need to pay attention to. Uh, so like this one, minus 20 approval. Yeah. And this one, minus 10, but pretty good for science. Tiny Arctic, exactly the same, just less people. So we've done all this. There's nothing more that I can actually do. So we're going to end the turn here, like so. So, end turn in progress. 
please wait. There we go, now it's the next turn. Another, another thing to note about this game, if you're playing it multiplayer or with AI, everyone takes their turn at the same time. So right now the AI is just taking his turn, and now he's waiting for me to end my turn before he starts doing more stuff. Uh, so you... Uh, this is quite useful to know. Well, not quite useful, you are going to be using it. So, these are the actions for the current ships that you have selected. So for this one, they defend the fleet, basically. No, not the fleet, the star system. A ship comes in, realises that I've got a ship here, and decides that he, he, he wants to run away, he doesn't want to fight. If I've got this enabled, he can't run away. That's basically what that is. Uh, this is just automatically explore the galaxy. Because the ships uh, quite annoying to uh, move around because you might change your mind, you might want them to go somewhere else. I prefer doing it myself. And I want him to explore here. So he goes there. I prefer doing that myself rather than having him do it automatically. Uh, he's almost reached there. Right. Uh, we'll go into this ship in a minute because I can't actually do anything with him yet. What am I researching? Yeah, okay. I'm researching colonize tundra. So any tundra type planets I'll be able to colonize. There's none here, unfortunately. Uh, oh well, we'll come across them eventually. Uh, let's make another investigator as well. Just to speed up uh, exploring. Hopefully run into an AI. Right, okay. Ah, oh, god damn it. Right, we've got... There's a new star system discovered. A uh, small lava, huge desert, tiny area. And it's got... This one's got a benefit. So that's no good. Continue moving the ship. And you're coming down here. Oh, hello. Ah, perfect. Right. If we zoom in, we see that these two lines are different. This swirling means that it's a wormhole. You need to research a specific technology in order to pass through this. And if we're just going to research, I can show you where it is. It's this one here. Unlock space travel via wormholes. Once I've got that unlocked, I can have my ships go through these these wormholes. I can't get to this one because I didn't have it researched. Uh, this effectively blocks off that side of the galaxy. And if I can't get to the rest of the galaxy from this bit. Uh, I'm I'm sealed off in this little corner until I've researched that, which is which is quite nice, I suppose. It just depends on how random it is, because in the games that I've played, it's, it's kind of split the galaxy in two, which is kind of boring. I prefer it if it was a bit more random, I guess. Uh, again. Ending the turn. There's just not, nothing else I can do. Oh, this. Oh, this one has colonizable planets. Yeah. Blue. Uh, these little dots here, over the star system. Blue means that it's it's colonized. Red means that you can't colonize it, and white means that you can colonize it. And uh, you can see any specific resources that are available here. So this one has red sang, and this one has red sang. So, it's it's worth getting them. Uh, let me just take a look at the planets. Uh, medium ocean, medium ocean and coral reefs. Uh, so, continue exploring. Uh, yeah, wormholes. Wormhole, wormhole. So I'm sealed off in this corner of the galaxy until I or the AI research wormhole travel which isn't easy to get to if we look at here 27 turns plus you have to go through these uh, so 12 27 and this one one but what I'm going to do is get you over here 
Yeah, am I still being researched? Well, I don't need the investigator because I can't get out. And instead, we'll get plus one on planet space. Yeah, we'll get you. Earn us some extra research points. So here, plus one research point per person. So I've got three, I'll get an extra three. Once this is full capacity, I'll have an extra six. And this applies to all the planets. So six, 10, 11, 14. I'll get 14 extra research points just by having this at the cost of two dust. Which is quite worth it since I'm making 11. Uh, so in the turn, nothing we can do. It's a lot of in turning. I can't remember if I already said that, but yeah. There's a lot of in turning. Uh, we can now colonize Tundra here, because we just researched it. It flashed up there. So if I wanted to, I could colonize this planet here. I don't have a well. I have you come over here. And you might as well return back, because yeah, I've done all this. Everything's explored that I can. And no, no research, okay. Uh, a nice thing to know about researching here. If you hold shift and click on stuff, it will make a, it will, uh, research them in a specific order. So I can research these, and then this, and then this, and then this. And then I want to come over here, and then I want this. Yeah, like that. So it researches all of them in that specific, specific order. Just be careful when you're navigating this screen because you have to hold left mouse and drag like this and if you accidentally do that which I have done a few times like that trying to move it across I've accidentally clicked on this resets it you gotta do it all over again so just yeah try to avoid that because this really is a time consuming game I'm on turn 5 and I haven't done anything yet. I've explored these four, four star systems. That's it. And I'm just waiting for this, these to research. 12 turns, 2 turns. It's going to take a long... It's going to be a while before anything actually happens. Uh, you need to remember that. Yeah. Take note of that when you play this game. Alright, uh, we've got some dust, so let's hire a hero. So who would be a good hero? I don't have any fleets. Uh, so... Faster construction, yeah. He'll be good to have, just to help build things a little bit quicker. So, I've hired him, I've paid the cost. He's got his own upkeep here, minus two. That increases with his level. I want to assign him to a system, and this one. There we go, that's done. His portrait's now here. And we'll be able to see what he's doing if we hover over here. I know what he's doing. Uh, if we look at this, he's got labor. Nine on labor. Plus 18 food, plus 18 industry. So if we're over here, he's making plus two food. And over here, he's adding plus 1.4 industry. We can increase that as he levels up. It's going to take a while, so... Don't expect that to happen anytime soon. Uh, end of turn. Do, 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 do. And something's completed. Sweet. So this, these gears indicate that an event has happened, something has been completed. So this star system has researched this and is now doing this. And if we go over here, we can see that. And now making 14 food since the exploit is now working, <coughs> not working, uh, initialized, there we go, so I'm probably making a lot of extra food, yeah, it was, it was like 8 wasn't it before, now it's 15, I wasn't getting plus 1 per person and plus 1 per person on Terran, on Terran. so that should be plus 2, I think, F yeah, plus 15 from planets. Yeah, so this planet alone is making me 15, yeah. This game is all about the numbers. Okay, this ship is special. 
specifically because it's a procreator. If we're going to its stats really quickly, which is, yeah, it is what the hell? No, that's protector, procreator. There we go. It's got this seed mod. This is the ship you use to colonize other star systems. Uh, let me just change this because we can make it a little bit better. If we give it this module here, which will improve its movement range by two, that's useful to have because there's not much else that you really need to put on this thing. Uh, the seed mod takes up so much tonnage, 48. Uh, there's not really anything else you can do with it. There's no point giving it weapons, there's no point giving it armor. So we'll apply that. That's now procreated too. It doesn't affect ships that you've already built, unfortunately. Just ones that you're currently building. So, this one here is now flashing. Colonize the star system this planet is orbiting. I click this, and I can choose a planet to colonize. Colonize. I can only choose two, which are these two here, the two oceans. Uh, if we have a quick overlook. So this one's got red sang, and this one's ocean. This one has red sang, and this one has ocean, but this has also got coral reefs. So this is a very good starting planet to colonize for this star system. I'm going to be getting extra food, which will increase the population, which will overall cut down the turns it will take to get this star system up and running. So we'll do that. This place is now colonized. The ship is consumed to colonize it. And if you go here, I've now got one group here. And that's going to increase up to max over turns. So first, if we have a look at this, medium terrain, medium desert, desert, huge arid. Um, uh, yeah, food is normally the best. Well, I find food is the best thing. Uh, at the start of a con, uh, yeah, start of a star system you just colonized, because it will improve the birth rate, and it, you'll be able to fill up the fill up these slots a lot quicker, which will improve the overall produ productivity of the star system. I'm slurring my words because I'm tired. That's all. Uh, so yeah, game event. I have colonized this planet. Um, yeah. uh, if we just check the score, I earned quite a few points by colonizing that planet. Okay. So, <clears throat> just a heads up. You're probably thinking, wow, so I need a procreator to colonize all these different planets. Because there's two more here that I can colonize, there's one here I can colonize, and all of these, once uh, I've researched how to colonize them. And. If we look here, it takes 10 turns to make this ship right now. So that's, what, a good 100 turns to colonize all these planets? Uh, no, that's not true. You only need one of those ships per subsystem. Subsystem? Star system. So since I've got people here, once the population level has increased, I can click here. I can click this down here, colonize Terran, and that will happen within the sub within the star system. You don't need a ship; it's all it's all done for you. It will uh, take one person from here and place them over here. So once I've yeah, so once the food's up and the population rate is increasing, I can quickly colonize the, these two planets here and all these other all these other planets. Uh, once I've researched how to colonize them. Uh, so, yeah, you just do that with all these star systems. You improve uh, their productivity, you research new technologies, you build big, strong ships, uh, you hoard resources because uh, there's no stockpiling. Uh, if you want, yeah, if you want to research 
I think I just did it. No, I didn't. If you want to research something down here, 827 turns, you're going to need to massively increase the science help, uh, the science points that you're generating for all the star systems that you own. So six and eleven. Once this is once this is all pop uh, colonized, that's the word. Uh, and I've got improvements to bump it up a little, a little. I'll probably get 60 from this one, uh, maybe 80 from this one, just guessing. I don't think that's the actual number. Uh, so 60, 80, 140, say, ex uh, research points between those two. And this costs 101,000, sorry, 1,650. So that shaves off quite a few turns. Maybe a couple of hundred. I can't be asked to work out the math. But yeah, you do that with all these star systems that you can own. Shaves off those turns, you get it quicker. Uh, increases the rate at which you can build stuff. Uh, like for instance, uh, if I research this one here, which gives this benefit. Plus 10% industry on star system plus the one industry on the planet types desert arctic arid tundra so if i were to build that here i wouldn't get any yeah i'll just get an extra 10 percent from here 0.9 percent which would bump that up to 10 10.9 uh 10.3 even or if i bring it here arid i think that was one wasn't it Terran, I get an extra plus one here, plus one here per person. Uh, that's the oh, yeah. So you get quite a lot of industry points building up here, which shaves off the turns to build ships. Yep. Okay. I just want to. Yeah, I think that's a pretty good portion of everything that needs to be explored on this game. The rest is obviously just playing it, expanding your empire. Oh yeah, one more thing. Uh, you're probably wondering why this doesn't have a red circle around it. Well, in order to make it part of your empire, it needs to be turned into a colonized planet. Right now it's just an outpost. In 30 turns it will be a colonized planet and it will get the red circle and be counted as part of your empire. Right, so I'm just going to quickly load my other game now uh, which is this one here I'm on turn 41 annoyingly it saves all that stuff I'm not sure if it deletes it later on hopefully it does because otherwise it's going to be really clogged up later on and I'm going to have to delete them one by one and that'll take forever so this is the game I'm currently playing uh, yeah, I've explored quite a big portion of the galaxy as you can see here uh, I've discovered both of the AIs I have the blue guy down here and the green guy I just haven't found the blue guy's uh, star systems yet uh, from here we can go into the diplomacy screen and interact with them so the line here indicates what current the current diplomatic status you have with them. Uh, the little snowflake icons means Cold War. I think it's a dove or a flower for peace. I can't actually remember. Uh, and there's another one for alliance. There's another one, uh, skull and bones for a war. Da da da. So I am going to click this guy down here, which brings him into the middle. And I get two options. I can expect. I can uh, inspect this guy. So this is Horatio. 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 Well, it's these guys. However you want to pronounce that, probably Horatio. I can see the bonuses they get. I can see their score. I can see our current status, which is Cold War. I can see our current attitude, which is neutral. And uh, the little arrow indicates if the point my attitude with them is increasing or decreasing. Right now, it's staying the same. Uh, the current deals we have with them uh, that doesn't include trade 
as I said, trade is automatic. And that's displayed over here, trade routes. Uh, I haven't got any yet, because we're in Cold War with them. Once that ends, we should get some automatic trade routes, depending on, I think, distance and what can actually be uh, what can actually be traded. You can't... It isn't like Shogun where you can like get horses and trade them to earn more money. It's just you get so many fids from them and they're getting so many fids from you. There's, there's, you don't actually see what's being traded. That's just done for you. Uh, and you're both benefit, benefiting from it. Uh, so, there's an enemy ship here. He is blockading this star system, uh, which is indicated by this ring around it. That means he's blockading it. So there's no trade, uh, no access to the luxury items. Uh, this will be a good time to find a ship to attack. Attack them. What ships within range? These guys are quite, uh, they're quite far away. Oh, yeah, ah, I've got a ship in the hangar, but it's appropriate to move these guys up. Oh, it's going to take a while. Shit. Oh, I've saved the game, so I can just reload it. Oh, this is where he buggers off, isn't it? And he's leaving. Ah, oh, now he's over there. Super. Ah, uh, uh. Hmm. I suppose what I could do... Yeah. If I start... If I get him down here, hopefully we can reach him. Good, good, good. Right. I'm not actually going to be able to do this, but I can just show you. Right, I'm in the Cold War status with this empire. What that means is that I can't attack their empire, but I can attack their ships outside of their em that are currently outside of their empire. So if they were within mine, I could attack them. Yeah, or if they're in one of these recently claimed star systems that aren't part of your that aren't part of your empire, yeah, I could attack them there. I can also try to take over their star system by invading it. I do that by clicking these two fists here. Embed the enemy star system, which will allow me to take it over. Right, you get some information on that. Invasion status, how many turns it will take for it to complete. Progress in percent, uh, the gain in the percent. Invasion power and system defense. The more invasion power you have, the quicker it will uh, work. You'll have own the star system for yourself. The more system defense, the longer it will take. But it's really, really uneven. On my last game, I had something like 200,000 invasion points against their 12,000. And it was still taking 10 turns. It's, yeah, it's probably so that you can't just take it over within one turn. But it still takes a really, really long time. So, overpowering them with as many ships as possible will just help taking it over. So I will do that. Yeah, I'm currently doing that. Uh, that's something built, don't care. Something's researched, don't care. Oh, yeah, right. This hero's gained a level. Yeah, he's got enough points. Uh, this guy I've got governing one of these star systems. I can't remember which one. But he's gaining experience from it each turn. He's gained enough to gain a level. Now we can go into his abilities and decide what ability we're giving him. So since he's governing a star system, I want to give him something that improves construction, which will help speed up ships and so forth. So I've got, I think, two choices with that. We have a look here. There's quite a few things I can choose from based on this uh, pilot and administrator, plus what I've already re uh, given him. I think I see him. So I've given him Director 1 and Director 2, plus 3 on Labour. For both. So for this one, requires Director 1, plus 20% on Star System. 
or I can get this one, which is plus, plus 15 on star system, or I can get labor uh, director 3, which is plus 4 labor, or I can get one of these for extra food, uh, I can get this for extra approval, blah 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 blah, I can only get one, because I've got one point, so depending on, let's have a look here, so 22, I get that, that increases 8%. It's not really worth it. If I get this, it's plus 15. An instant plus 15 there. Or plus 20. So I get this, plus 20. That's a lot better than getting that. So, for now we'll just get out of the flat out, plus 15. Because the stuff we're building is relatively low industry cost. And that will just shave a turn or two off. If we find the planet that is governing here. Yep, plus 15 from hero abilities. Sweet. Uh, so, if now I want to create the procreator here, it's only going to take two turns as opposed to before when it was taking ten turns. Because they're producing a lot more industry. Not enough to get it in one turn, but enough to shave eight turns off. Uh, so, yep, that's that. Right, oh, this button here. Execute all planned moves for your fleet. So I click that. Any ships that are currently assigned to move will move. You don't have to wait for the end of the turn. That's useful for when this guy's over here. I want him to go up here. Do that, and it does it. <coughs> <coughs> oh, fucking hell. No, I'm out of tea. Well, I think this is almost done, anyway. Let's quickly light a cigarette. Uh, okay, yeah, I just want to show a battle now, so I need to find someone to fight. He should send his ships here to stop me from taking over. So, hopefully we'll get a fight within a couple of seconds. Yeah, hopefully we'll come to... F ah, perfect! Yeah. Our oh, pirates are down here. This is a pirate ship. Alright, so I can choose auto or manual. You've got a time limit, which is annoying. Uh, you can see his stats, you can see yours, but you don't have a lot of time to choose, so... Yeah, so it's ready for battle, so I can quickly go over. Uh, I'm not going to be able to win this. He's got a lot more power. This is just a... I've just got a scout ship. He's actually got a attacking ship. Uh, oh, that's really annoying. As I wanted to explain it. But he's got 195 kinetic power. Yeah, ah. Uh, you don't get... There's no pause either, is there? No, there's no pause. So, during fights you can choose these cards, which give certain bonuses or negative effects. They can sometimes turn the tide in a battle, they can sometimes not. Uh, certain types will affect... Yeah, will counter others and... yeah. So, I want to do tactics engineering. Right, so, that counters engineering, and it counts as tactics. So... Offense or counter tactics. If he counters it, that card won't work. Yeah, my scout ship's been destroyed. I hope that was enough to explain it. Since I can't fucking pause it, I can't show you it. I can't explain it in detail, I have to rush it. I've lost the battle. They're dead, oh no. Doesn't matter. Yeah, there we go. Uh, what happened? I did 124 damage. Yeah. That was just a scout ship. Uh, my actual attacking fleet is down here right now. now. I've got these three. Just 343. We look at one specific. This has got 65. This has got 65. This has got 117. These are... yeah. If we quickly go into research again. Uh, I researched this, which gives me access to a new ship design. 
Uh, there's a couple of ship designs that you can research. There's that one there. There's this one here. Uh, this one here. This one here. I think that's all of them. Hopefully they'll add more ship designs just to uh, add some variety to it. So the Protector Plus is the new ship design that I've unlocked. Comparing to this one, it's exactly the same, except that it gets uh, minus 20% tonnage for defensive modules. So for every defense module I add, it's minus 20. Which is only one, but it allows me to add an extra attacking one, or such. Right, so I've added six. That chops one off. It gives me an extra six tonnage, which is an almost enough to add an extra high isotope slugs for better attacking power. Uh, yeah. Later on you get the bigger and better ships that are used primarily as like battleships. They've got a large larger tonnage limit. You can give them the really big strong weapons. Oh, uh, another thing I should probably mention. Depending on what modules you give it, it will affect how much it will cost to build. So if I shave some of these off, it costs less. If I add them back, it yeah, costs more. Yeah, so if it, ooh. Yeah, because I've researched an extra weapon type, I can change out their weapons. Oops, like that. I can give them the slightly stronger ones. If I hover over, we can see exactly how much stronger it is. So four damage min, uh, four damage max, two damage minimum, and this one is three damage max, two damage minimum. So it's a slight improvement, very slight, which is kind of depressing. Yeah, oh dear. For the extra weight it costs, it's probably not really worth it. If I can add 8 there, I can add 9 there, so yeah. I'm getting an extra 2 to 3 damage because I can add 1 more. Compared to this, which is giving me maybe an extra 8 or such. I suppose it works out, but yeah. Uh, you get yeah the upgrades that can improve tonnage, weight, blah, blah 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 you know all this I explained earlier I think that covers everything mm. victory conditions I forgot about that yeah there are victory conditions uh, there's different ones that you can go for I, th I think that's how it works you can go for economic victory which is just hoarding as many points and stuff as, uh, as many uh, fids as you can between your star systems. I think that's how it works. Or you can go for military victory, which is uh, having a strong military and capturing star systems. Or diplomacy victory. I, th I think that's being friendly with everyone. Or or trade, having a lot of trade routes and such. I'm not really sure. It doesn't really explain the victory conditions well. Uh, if we hover over these. Okay, supremacy victory 33%, expansion victory 25%. Uh, it should say, oh, I used to say, the FIDS victory under here, for some reason it's not now. Uh, yeah, if you also hover over here, you can see what position you're in. Uh, for this, I'm second in FIDs. I'm making 499 FIDs. No, 494 FIDs. And I'm second. So someone's making more. Uh, the other guy's making less. Knowledge. I'm 67th. I've done the most research. Uh, I think it's research. Yeah, it's not actual points. It's not points. It's actual research I've done, I think. Uh, I'm second in military strength, but I'm first in command points is command points. I think command points is the total number of ships that you have. Uh, no, that's not true. Uh, 
Uh, come on, put one, one, one. Oh, I've got a ship in the hangar as well, haven't I? This is one. Hmm. Oh, and this one's in the hangar. Yeah, so it's a number of ships that you have uh, worth in command points. Right, I think that covers everything. There's quite a lot to learn in this game. Uh, hopefully this tutorial helps people out. Uh, yeah, and I hope you enjoyed the game. Uh, I'm enjoying it. It's slow, but when stuff actually happens I find it can be quite fun. Uh, it's very micromanagement I find. Uh, but yeah, so. My channel's really turning into a tutorial channel, isn't it? I've got more tutorials than anything else, I guess. But yeah, we'll end this here. If anything else comes up, I'll just add to it in another part or something. Uh, until then, I'll see you soon. Happy gaming.